Uh, okay, good morning. So let us start today's lesson. This is the new chapter. It's one of the most important parts of this lesson. Uh, so, and the title is uh, Primitive Functions, which is related to these pages in the book. Uh, let me start with the definition of what is the primitive function. What I want to say in this uh, lesson uh, is, uh, for the time being, we start this lesson without some kind of motivation. Okay, uh, so you just can you can consider this as a mathematical curiosity for the time being, and then later after this section first section is finished then we come back and say that okay why this is useful in the first place on top of just being a mathematical curiosity okay so yeah you just assume that we are learning doing some game here okay but that is the reverse game of derivative so it means that in the previous lessons I gave you a function f of x for example x squared and I ask you to differentiate it you differentiate it, give it 2x to me. Now I want to reverse engineering the problem. This time I give you 2x, and I ask you what is the original function, okay? Which is called a primitive function. So you might wonder why this is useful. That's why I'm saying do not resist about why this is useful for the time being. I can guarantee that this is really useful. Uh, but let us try to learn this game that will be important for the next lesson which we will talk about the applications of this okay so that's the uh, topic of today's lesson we want to learn how to go backward from a function to its primitive function yes okay so the first thing i want to do here is to define what do i mean by a primitive function okay so i would say that let me start with definition So uh, we say that a function, capital F, is said to be a primitive function or sometimes people call it antiderivative. derivative uh, of a function little f if the derivative of capital F is equal to the little f. Yeah, so that's the very simple definition. So, and this is the standard uh, notation. So I say that a, a function which I call it capital F is said to be a primitive function for a function little f if the derivative of capital F becomes little f. That's as simple as that. Okay, so I think you can make hundreds of examples in your mind right now, but let me give one. So, uh, the functions so, so for example f sub 1 x equals to x to the power of 3 f sub 2 x equals to x to power 3 plus 2 and let me also add and for example f sub 3 x equals to x to the power of 3 minus the square root of 7 are all primitive functions of the function f of x equals to what? 3x squared yes so let me not stop since why 
because if you differentiate f1 capital f1 of x or if you differentiate capital 2 of x or even if you differentiate capital f3 of x all of them become equal to the same function which is 3x squared and 3x squared is just your little f yes as simple as that so uh, you see that i was able to find not even more I, I i was able to find immediately three primitive functions for this simple function so is that clear so all of them the derivative of all of them is the same function so i hope that you immediately can give me another function yes can you tell me for example f4 of x yes can you give me another function which is still a primitive function for the same function? Yes. Plus, one. plus one, yes. So you see that if you find a primitive function, in principle you found in infinitely many primitive functions because you can change that constant to any other constant that you like, but still that's a primitive function. Yes? Is that clear? So this is something that I want to write as a remark here. Okay, if f is a primitive function of little f, and if, so let me write like this, a primitive function of f, then capital F plus c where c is an arbitrary constant is also a primitive function of f Yes, is that understandable? If someone asks you why, if I ask you why this is a primitive function for little f, you need to convince me like this. You would tell me that, okay, I take capital F plus C and I differentiate it and I want to convince myself that this becomes little f. If I can convince this, can convince myself about this, I am done. But this is extremely simple, yes? Because if I ask you what is the left-hand side, you will tell me the left hand side according to the rules we learned in differentiation i can differentiate the first one i can differentiate the second one and i can add them but what is capital f prime you are assuming that capital f is a primitive function for little f so if i ask you what else i can write for capital f prime your answer will definitely be little f and if I ask you what can you write for the constant derivative is 0 and then f plus 0 is f. So if we as agree that capital F is a primitive function of little f, then if I add any constant to it, it doesn't change the game. So still I get a function which is a primitive function of the previous function. So is that clear? Okay. So that is one thing that is important. But there is another remark. The other way around is also may, mostly correct. So if I give you two functions whose derivatives are the same function, they can differ at most by a constant. Yes? So that is important to understand. So, uh, but this is not easy to prove. So the proof of this remark was here simple. But the other way around is also true. So what does it mean? It means that if two functions, f and g, are primitive functions to the same function, then these two functions cannot differ that much. They differ at most by an additive constant. Okay? This is not trivial. I want you to understand. And the proof is beyond the high school level. You need more theorems in mathematics to be able to prove this.
So is that clear? So let me repeat. Yes. What do you mean by arbitrary constant? Any constant or any. So arbitrary means anything that you like. It doesn't matter which number you choose. Okay. So let me repeat this. So this tells you that if you have a primitive function, you already have a primitive function for this. You decide to add any number you like to this capital F, say C, no matter what you add. You get, of course, a new function, F plus C and F are not the same. If C is zero, they are the same. But if C is not zero, they are not the same. So this is a new function, but this new function is a still a primitive function for the little f. This is very simple. We proved that actually with the lessons, with the knowledge of high school. But my point is it's something different now. If someone tells you that, so if, if there is a function f, someone succeed to find a primitive function for this say f1 someone else succeed to find another primitive function for little f f2 what i am saying is that either f1 and f2 that these people have found are exactly equal or they can differ by at most a constant an additive constant they cannot differ a lot. Do you understand what I mean? So that's it. If I give you a function, two students find two primitive functions. When I check the primitive functions, either they are 100% equal or they at most differ by an additive constant. But the proof of this theorem is, a little, is above the knowledge of high school, but I want you to know that that is also true. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, so let me give you another example to understand the idea. Uh, okay, so let us do another example. Uh, show that capital F of X equals to uh, 2 square root of x oh let me see uh, show that the f of x equals to minus 1 over x is a primitive function of little f of x equals to 1 over x squared. Okay, so this problem is not hard. So I want you to understand. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to do? I want to show that the function capital F offered in the problem is a primitive function for this function. Yes? Exactly. So I just want you to understand this example is nothing new. It's a phrased in a new way but that is essentially the same thing. What should I do? I need to differentiate the proposed function to confirm that the derivative of this proposed function is equal to this function. If I can succeed to show you this, then it means that I have shown that this is a primitive function for that. So let me write the solution here. So what we do, we show that capital F prime is equal to little f. So how should I do that? So hopefully you haven't forgotten about differentiation. So what I do, I will start taking the derivative of the function. But before doing that, what should I do if I want to differentiate this function? What I'm supposed to do, do you remember? Yeah, bring it up. Yes, so I write it what? 
I have a minus sign here, so I keep it here. And then I bring x up, it becomes x to the power of negative 1. Then if I ask you what is the derivative of this function, you actually have a minus sign. And then that minus 1 goes down, so it becomes minus 1. And then x to the power of minus 1, minus 1. But minus minus 1 is just simply 1, x to power minus 2. But a better way of writing this is 1 over x to the power of 2. But if you compare it with this one, that is exactly your little f. Okay? So this means that you actually solve this problem. I propose you a function. You were able to confirm that this proposed function is a primitive function for f. Okay, so I want to ask, what is your question now? You should have a question at this point, yes? What that question is? Yes? No, the other way is differentiation. What do you mean by going the other way? Or like going from, from a function to, to a primitive function. Yeah, exactly. So it means that here I offered a function to you and you confirmed that what I offered is correct. Okay, but the main point is that if I do not offer you this function and I just give you this function and I ask you what is a primitive function for this function, that is a different problem. Yes, I can make this uh, function harder, but that would be a harder exercise in differentiation, not today's lesson. Okay, so I want you to understand if the function is offered to you, Confirming that this is a primitive function is simple if you know how to differentiate well. You just differentiate it and say that this is equal to this one. But the main question is that if this is not given to me, but this is given to me and I am supposed to find this myself, how should I do that? Okay. The first thing that I want you to understand that is that this is not always possible. Okay, it is not always like differentiation. In differentiation, I give you a function. If you have practice enough, you can differentiate and give me a function unless you can confirm that this function is not differentiable. But here, there are functions that I can give you and then you cannot find a primitive function for them. Okay, there are two scenarios. Either there are no primitive functions at all or there are some primitive functions that not be expressed in terms of the functions you know. What are the functions we know? The functions we know are polynomial functions, rational functions, exponential functions, and later you will also study trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions. These are famous functions we know. Yes? So there are some functions whose primitive functions are not among these functions. You have to artifact a new function uh, which plays the role the, of the primitive function of the given function. By the way, don't think that the functions are extremely complicated. No. For example, let me ask your idea here. So let me see. If I give you this one, function f of x, I just want you to guess a little bit. I give you this function, e to power x. Can you give me a primitive function for this, I don't know if you remember the formulas from the previous chapter. So when I am asking you, can you give me a primitive function, I am asking you, can you imagine a function whose derivative is this function? But this is hopefully simple for you. What that question mark is? e to the power of x. So the answer here is e to the power of x. But interestingly enough, if I change my function g of x, to not a very complicated function, just e to power x squared. And I ask you the same question, capital G. Then it is a mathematical theorem that a primitive function for this simple innocent function is not among the functions we already know. So you cannot construct any function Com as a combination of polynomial, exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric, or whatever functions you have studied so far, there is no function whose derivative becomes e to the power of x squared. Let me correct myself. Not there is no function. There is no function among the functions we are familiar with. And we can artifact a new function whose derivative is e to power x squared, 
and there is a name for that function that is called the error function. So people have already constructed a function whose derivative is e to power x squared. Okay, I'm just giving you because these are deep and important problems. If you are interested in learning mathematics in a good way, this is good to know about, to have this information. So right in the beginning, I'm just telling you that uh, don't think that whatever function I offer, you can find a primitive function. Either there are no primitive functions, or even if there are, sometimes it is not possible to find that among the functions we know. So this motivates us to learn how to find primitive functions for the functions at least we know. That is the part of the lesson. Okay? And you will study this if you go to technical universities, you will study about this a lot later. So you spend a lot of time to learn how to find primitive functions for the functions that can be expressed in terms of the functions we know. Okay? Okay, these are just uh, important points I want you to learn about them if you're interested, but you just need to know how to find primitive functions of very simple functions. Okay. Now, my question for you is that, what do you think I will teach you next? So let me see, everyone happy with what I'm talking about? So you learned the notion of a primitive function. Right in the beginning, I told you don't be very optimistic because there are a lot of functions that we cannot find as primitive functions. Even you don't think that this is a very horrible function. No, it's not a horrible function. It's as simple as e to power x squared. Uh, and now my question is that, what do you expect me to teach you now? No, I'm just talking about, I will teach you integrals, but about this lesson. So then if you are the teacher, you want to teach the next lesson, what do you do? So, so we come to the point that we have to learn how to find primitive functions. Yes, because do you remember I told you that in this example, I told you that this function was offered and then you were able to confirm that. My question is that if the function primitive function is not offered how can i find it myself okay and then okay yes please i guess the first step is to find a primitive function would be to find out if there is a list of primitive function for, for uh, the function given. okay but how many functions are there infinitely. infinitely many i just want you to learn the idea is more or less the same thing as for derivative we didn't start finding a derivative of all possible functions. Do you remember what I did? We start categorizing the functions from the simplest possible function to make it a little bit harder and harder. And I told you that this table will continue when you go to next lesson in Math 4 and in the university. So I want to do the same thing here. So I want to categorize my functions. So what was the simplest possible function? No, there are simpler functions than that, yes. No, even simpler than that. The simplest possible function, do you remember what was the first row in the table of derivatives? A constant function. Yes, that's the same thing here. So why do you change your ideas? So that's what I'm saying. We go back here and then we want to uh, make a new table. This new table will also be given to you in the formula sheet. So here we have this table. Okay, and I want to complete this table. How should I complete this table? So I write a little f here, and I write a capital F here. So, and then I start with the simplest possible function, which is a constant function. But let, I want you to answer me. For example, if I give you a function f of x, the simplest possible function is probably, I don't know. Let me ask you one. Can you tell me what is a primitive function for one? No, you want a function whose derivative is 1. X. So that function is X. But is X the only one? No. Any constant. X plus 1, X minus 2, X plus the square root of 3. So this is why you say that, okay, I put a constant. You choose the constant yourself. So this is the function whose derivative is 1. Okay. If I ask you what happens if the function is 2, can you tell me what is capital F in this case? A function whose derivative is 2. It's 2x. Yes. So it is a 2x and then plus that famous constant. 
So if I ask you what is if f of x is 3, what is your answer? 3x plus c. 3x plus c. If, the, if the function is a square root of 5. Yes. So if I ask you what is f of x, what is a primitive function for pi number? Pi is the famous pi number. So what is a primitive function? Pi x plus c. So now if I want to ask your opinion, so by the way, I am doing some guesswork. But then you will see that even though I am doing some guesswork here, in the future, this will be more than that. Okay. So if I want to complete my table, I would write a constant here. So let me write the constant here. And now tell me what is the answer I have to write in front? K is a constant. K, whatever K is, multiplied by a constant plus a C. So this is the first row in my table. If I give you a constant, its primitive function is that one. Okay? Now, after the constant function, what do you think it's a good idea to start working with? Okay? What? Yeah, even if the, the, the most simplest linear function is f of x equals to? f of x equals to? x itself. Okay, can you tell me a function whose derivative is x? Yes? One half x squared. Yes. How did you understand there is a one half? Because I, by the way, I don't think it is hard for you to see that that function should be x squared something. Because if I ask you what is a primitive, what is the derivative of x squared, what is the answer? 2x. But unfortunately, I do not need that 2 here. So I need to foresee what is happening. So what is... Uh, Simon actually mentioned, so you put a one half here and then say x squared so that this two that is going to be down after differentiation will cancel this one half and I get x. Okay, so hopefully you agree with me that this answer is one half x squared. Yes? Okay, let me make it a little bit different. So if I give you x squared now, what do you guess for capital F again? Remember, you want to find a function whose derivative is x squared. Anyone else? Yes? One third x to the power of 3. Of course, any, a constant is also added if you want to. Do you agree with that? Because if I ask you to differentiate this, you have one third. This 3 goes down. And then uh, one unit is uh, subtracted from the power, so it becomes two. But this three that goes down will cancel that one third that I predicted and put it there. Then the answer becomes x squared. Agree? So a primitive function for x squared is one third x to the power of three. And I hope that you immediately can answer the next one if I give you what happens if my function is x cubed itself, and I ask you to find a function whose derivative is x cubed. What is that function now? Anyone else? What's that function? 1, 4, to the power of four. one four x to the power of 4. Yes, 1 over 4 x to the power of 4 plus a constant. Now, can you see the pattern? Instead of 1, 2, 3, let me just write n. Then what will be your guess? So f of x, x to power n, then what is your guess for capital F? Yes, Yen? 1 over n plus 1? A little bit small mistake. 1 over n plus 1, x to the power of n plus 1, plus a constant. Yes? Okay. Uh, but the problem is not finished yet because these are only natural powers. Do you think the rule of the game will change if I change from a natural power to a negative integer, for example? And more than that, if do you think this will change if I look at the rational uh, exponents or even worse, irrational exponents? Of course, I rely... On your knowledge from the derivative so if you remember the derivative of x to power n I didn't prove it in detail 
if you I don't know if you go back to the lesson I just uh, showed that for some simple cases I proved them and then I said that okay if you learn a little bit more mathematics you will see that fortunately this pattern will continue to be the case for any kind of exponents so if you go back we didn't prove that rigorously but I tried to motivate you but now based on the knowledge that I sold you there I just want to use that and then uh, prove something here. So let us try to understand that one better. So let me just write what we learned here. We learned about this. We have f of x equals to x to power n and then n is a natural number and you hopefully agreed with me that the capital F is of this form 1 over n plus 1 x to power n plus 1 plus a constant. Okay, let me ask you what do you think? If I ask you Give me a function whose primitive function is this, uh, x, 1 over x, if I ask you about that. Yeah, there is a such a function. I just want you to understand. This you will answer it math for. Even though, so this is not an special case of the previous one because even though 1 over x can be written as x to power minus 1, but you see that you have some problems here. You cannot choose n to be minus 1, then you will have 1 over 0. So this innocent function is completely different. So this function does not fit into this function, even though. If I ask you, can you compare these two functions, the answer is yes, n is minus 1. But later, you will learn that the answer to this is simply ln of x. Okay? So this is in math 4. So we, you will not have this one. So forget about this. But what about other scenarios? For example, let me give you f of x equals to 1 over x squared. Can you give me a function whose derivative is that one? Hmm? Yes, so the same pattern will work again, but this is not trivial. Okay, that, that is we are lucky. So if I, I want to show you that the same pattern will work. So this becomes x to power minus 2. And then if we put minus 2 here, what happens? It becomes 1 over minus 2 plus 1, x to the power of minus 2 plus 1. If you simplify that, it becomes minus 1 over 1. So 1 over minus 1, x to power minus 1. And then the answer becomes minus x to power minus 1. Okay? So now if I ask you to differentiate this function, what is the answer? The answer minus 1 goes down. And then I have a minus sign here, x to power minus 2, which is x to power minus 2, which is 1 over x squared. Yes? So, but the bottom line is that uh, for every n, so let me write the answer here. If I give you f of x to be x to power a, no matter what a is, the only exception is that you have to be careful, a cannot be equal to minus 1. And then my claim is that capital F of X is 1 over A plus 1, X to power A plus 1 plus a constant. This I will add to my table. Okay? If I ask you to confirm this claim, what you are supposed to do? You are supposed to differentiate the capital F and confirm that the derivative of capital F is X to power A. Okay, so let us just do it together. So if I ask you to differentiate f of x, what do you say? You say that 1 over a plus 1 is a constant. And then if I want to apply the derivative here, a plus 1 goes down and x to the power of a plus 1, 1 unit less. But fortunately, this one, whatever it is, will cancel that one. And this just becomes simply a. So this becomes x to power a which is f of x. Yes? So I will go back to the previous page now and then put this as our formula. Okay? So we go here. Uh, so, and I write this. So if I put x to power a, 
And if you don't mind, let me just move these things a little bit to the right, to the left, yes. And then there is exception, so A shouldn't be minus 1. Be, be careful about that. And then the answer is 1 over A plus 1, X to power A plus 1 plus A. Constant. Okay. So you might think that we are just guessing things. But no, uh, the guessing part is uh, here finished. We can use uh, these two simple formulas to solve a lot of uh, interesting problems. So let me just give you some examples that uh, determine uh, determine. By the way, let me also emphasize here. I would write a and then primitive function. of the following functions. Yes. So when I say A, there are three articles here. A, the, and O. Okay? We'll talk about the later. But sometimes people say find all primitive functions. It means that you have to write that constant C at the end. Yes, because you want to find all of them. If you give one of them, another person can come in and add a constant to it. So when they say all, you have to show that you put a constant C at the end, show that you know the rule of the game. But when they say F primitive function, you can choose whatever you want for C. Okay? One of them is enough. And what is the best choice? Zero. So this is why when you say a, people don't write c because they have chosen c to be zero. But if if you see in the question they are asking for all, you have to respect and put that constant c at the end. Is that clear? Okay. So now let me give you some examples. Uh, number one. Let me start with a very very simple one. F of x is equal to uh, let us say x to power 7. Okay, so what is the primitive function for this? So you start writing capital F of x equals to. So what was the formula? Do you remember? So let me write the formula here in front of your eyes. So we had x to power a. So let us memorize that. So what was the formula for primitive function of this? Is 1 over a plus 1 x to power a plus 1 in general a constant so in this problem you don't need to put c there okay so let us go back and solve that problem so the answer becomes 1 over uh, 7 plus 1 x to power 7 plus 1 and simplify that so capital f of x becomes what 1 over 8 x to power 8 so that's the answer to this problem yes is that clear Okay, so now let me let me make it a little bit interesting. So I give you a function. I, I think it is a little bit harder for you now to guess. I just want you to understand this is not just a guesswork. What about the square root of x, a simple function like this? Can you guess, just without calculations, a function whose derivative is a square root of x? I just want you to feel that guessing becomes harder. Yes? No, x to the power of 2, the derivative becomes what? 2x. Two 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 to, to the power of? Two-thirds. To the power of two-thirds is close, but it is not correct. Because if you take the derivative of two-thirds, and two-thirds goes down, um, yes? Over two. There should be something to compensate for the two-thirds coming down. Three over two, uh, two six, uh, to the power of two or three. Yes. So it was harder to guess. But still, you might say that I can guess. But let us solve the problem now. So if you want to solve the problem, how do you solve it? Because the only thing that you have in your hand is this function, you have to change the form of this given function to make it like this. And then you know the rule of the game. What is that? 
So before starting finding the primitive function, I change the form of my function from square root of x to x to the power of 1 half. Now, this is going to play the role of this a. And now I can start. I can say that the capital F of x is equal to 1 over a plus 1 x to the power of a plus 1. Yes? And then I have to simplify this. So in our head, if I calculate this, it is 3 over 2. But it is 1 over 3 over 2, which becomes 2 over 3. And then x to the power of 1 half plus 1 is 3 over 2. So yes, what you said is correct. Yes, let me give you another example. Number 3. What about this function? f of x equals to, for example, um, the third root of x to the power of 2. So we want to find a function whose derivative is this one. I just want you to feel that uh, the examples are not as easy as before, even though we started by guesswork. But this is more than just guesswork, because we can use the pattern we learned to solve harder and answer harder questions. So we want to find the primitive function for this one. So what should I do again? Hopefully, let me write the formula. I don't know if you remember. If you have something like this, the nth root of a to power m, that can also be written as uh, an exponent. How? A power. a to the power of m over n. So the number that you see here goes there and the number that you see here goes here. And if this number is not written, it means n is 2. Be careful. If it is not written, n is 2. Okay? Okay, so let us go back here now. So what I'm supposed to do, I first change the form of my function. So this becomes x to the power of 2 thirds. And then I start finding my primitive function by giving the role of a to 2 thirds. So it becomes what? 1 over 2 thirds. And I really recommend you to try to learn to calculate this in your head. It's really boring if I want to write this all the time, but anyway. So can you do it in your head? What's the answer? Yes, because if I add this part, it becomes 5 over 3. But it is 1 over 5 over 3, so it becomes 3 over 5. And x to the power of what? 5 over 3. So the capital F of x in this problem is 3 over 5, x to the power of 5 over 3. Yes, is that understandable? Okay, uh, now, for example, I can give you some fractions as well. So number four, yes? Is there a formula for, for this? Like if you, if you would say the nth root of x. Yeah, you can discover the formula if you want to. But uh, I, would, I don't recommend you because you know you have to memorize more. Yes? Okay. Uh, so this one single formula is enough for answering these uh, questions. And even a little bit, I can also work with a little bit of fractions. For example, number four. So if I give you this function, f of x is equal to, say, 1 over x to the power of 5. So I want to find a primitive function for this, a function whose derivative is this. How should I do that? The first thing that I do, can you tell me what is the first thing? Yeah, I have to write it in the same form that I want, I have the formula for. So I bring it up and write it as x to power minus 5, and now everything is ready, so I can calculate capital F of x, which is 1 over minus 5 plus 1, and then x to the power of minus 5 plus 1. What's the answer? It's minus 1 over 4, x to power minus 4. That is up to you if you want to simplify this. So I can bring this back to the denominator and make it positive 4, yes? 
that is also a function. Yes? Uh, there is something which is missing in the book. This is very interesting. They even bother to think about it. But this is important. Um, if, if you have primitive functions for two functions, I don't know, let me invent a new symbol. For example, let me write PRM for primitive. If you want to find primitive function for the sum of two functions, what do you think you can do? If I give you two functions, add them, f plus g, it becomes a new function. If I ask you how can you find a primitive function for this new function, what do you say? Okay, you say do them separately. So it means that you say calculate primitive function for the first one, calculate the primitive function for the second one, and then what to do with them? Add them. Okay? And then let me ask you another question. A primitive function for multiplication. Do you have any guess here? Uh, what is it? So I give you two functions, little f and little g. I multiply them. It becomes a new function. Then I ask you, what is a primitive function for the new function? Can you say something similar to what was uh, Ali mentioned for the first one? Can we say that this is equal to primitive function of f, primitive function of g, and then multiplied? The answer is no. Yes? It's not that simple. I don't know why the book doesn't talk about these rules, but these are important. Okay, they are using it, but without talking about it. Okay, so this is not correct. For example, to show you that this is not correct, let me tell you f of x is x, and let me give you g of x is simply x squared. Okay? If I ask you what is a primitive function for this can you answer that? Yes. The answer is 1 over 2x squared. Can you answer a primitive function for this? We just learned. It is 1 over 3x to the power of 3. And let me multiply them. What is the answer? It's 1 over 6x to the power of 5. But now let me multiply them first. What is the answer? It's x to the power of 3 and then find a primitive function. What is the primitive function? 1 over 4 x to power 4. So you see these two are different. So remember that this formula, I think it's better to write it down and cross it over. It doesn't matter how many times I say that this is wrong, but the students sometimes use it in the exam. Okay, so this is not correct. And this is showing, this simple example shows you that this is not working. Okay? And the same is true for this one. f over g, if you write it primitive function for the numerator, so and then primitive function for the denominator, that's also not correct in general. Okay? So but people sometimes desperately use this. Yeah, unfortunately, mathematics doesn't care about what you think or what situation you are in. It is wrong, it is wrong. Yes. Is there some kind of formula similar to this which is true? Yes, yes. There is another one, for example, how many uh, main operations we have? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For multiplication and division, it didn't work. For addition, it works, but we have to prove why it works. But for subtraction, what do you think? It also works. So I would say that primitive function for f minus g is also a primitive function of f minus primitive function of g. Okay. So if you don't mind, let me just move this a little bit lower because these are the wrong ones. A very, a very particular case of multiplication also works. Can you guess what that for? In general, multiplication doesn't work. But there is one special case that it works. And if that is the case that one of the functions is constant. Okay, so it means that, uh, in principle, if primitive function c multiplied by f, the answer is very simple, by the way. c goes out, and then I just calculate the primitive function for f. These are the rules, even though the book is using it all over again, all over, 
the book, but they are not mentioning this explicitly, and they are not trivial. You have to prove them first. So this tells you that if you add two functions first and then take primitive function, it doesn't matter if you take primitive function first and then add. This tells you that it doesn't matter if you subtract first and take the primitive function later, or you take the primitive function first and subtract them, be careful about learning this one. So let me emphasize here that C is not any, is a constant, a constant. Okay? If C is a constant, multiplicative constant, okay? So you pull the constant out and you just focus on finding a primitive function for your function. Is that clear? So for example, if I ask you now, can you find the primitive function for this function? What is your answer? <clears throat> I give you a function f of x to be 3x to the power of 2, and then I would say that 4x to the power of 2. So for, sorry, 4x. What is a primitive function for this one? So let me write it once. I don't want you to write it like this that I'm writing now, but I want you to understand that I am using all the rules I mentioned. I want to find the primitive function for this. Let me solve this one. I will come back to you. So I use the addition rule because this is the sum of two functions. So I can write primitive function of the first one plus the primitive function of the second one. The book is using this without even mentioning it. But this is there is a rule behind that. And which rule is now applicable? I have a constant here, a constant there, so I can pull them out. So this becomes 3 primitive function for x squared plus 4 primitive function of just x. And now this, if I ask you, do you know a primitive function for x squared? The answer is easy. It's 1 third x to power 3, what we learned. Do you know a primitive function for x? It is 1 over 2 x squared. And if this is all primitive functions, you just add a constant there. In principle, you should add a constant here and a constant there. But of course, you can combine these two constants at the end and give them a name c. You can write a constant c1 here, a constant c2 here, and then c1 plus c2, it becomes a new constant. I can call it c. So that's the philosophy behind it. So that is why... This becomes now x to the power of 3 plus 2x squared plus a constant. So I want you to understand, so you can use it. What is written in the book is not wrong. It is completely correct. But I want you to understand they are following some rules without even mentioning it. So now you know that these rules are correct. Is that clear? Okay. So now what is your opinion about this one? Let me solve this problem. What time is it? Uh, yeah, we can stop after this example if you are tired. So here, f of x is equal to, say, x to power 2 and then multiplied by 2x plus 1. Okay, I want you to find all primitive functions for this function. What should I do? Yes? Yes, yeah, so I want you to understand there is no way that I can tackle this problem directly. Yes, so this will motivate you hopefully to expand this. It becomes 2x to the power of 3 plus x squared. And now everything hopefully is ready. You have these two, uh, rules of addition and multiplying by a constant and you also know what we should do with these. So what are the, what is the answer? Can you do it in your head? 2 times what? 1 over... 4, 4, 1 more, x to power 4, and then plus 1 over 3, x to power 3, and let me call the constancy here, you simplify it a little bit, it becomes 1 half x to the 4th, 1 third x to the power of 3, plus a constant, yes? So we were able to find a function whose derivative is this function. Let me give you one more example, and then we are done, okay? So we can finish this. <clears throat> or actually, I want to wait a little bit for you, okay? So f of x is equal to 
square root of x times x minus 1 to power 2 plus 5. Okay, by the way, I want you to feel that pro really it is hard to guess a function whose derivative is this. Yes, but even though we started with the guesswork, but we are gaining something. Yes, I don't think it is that easy for every, any one of us to guess a function whose derivative becomes this function. But we are able to calculate. I paused the video recording for a little bit of time. I want you to work with this. If you can work it out, you learn everything for this lesson. Okay? Uh, okay. Do you have any suggestion where we should start? Yes? Yes, after? No, I don't. I don't know the answer. But what what is the first thing to do? Okay, first we expand. Yes, let me just do it step by step. So what you are saying is that we just expand the expression. So I keep it a square root of x, and this becomes the first one squared, two times the first one times the second one, and the second one squared, and then I have a five there. Of course, then I expand more by multiplying this in. Uh, I can put a 2 here, then x, then I have square root of x, then I have 5. Okay, then what? What do you mean by simplification? Okay, so how do you want to multiply them? Because for the time being, I cannot use any formulas right now. Yes? This is a square root of x multiplied by x, x squared. And I told you before, you are not allowed to find this and this separately. There is no rule for this one. But I have to do something to it in order to be able to do that. Yes? Um, I, I, I rewrote square root of x as uh, x to the power of one half, and what is the benefit of that? Uh, then I can take uh, x to the power of one half plus two. Plus two, yes, exactly. And we will use the same idea for all of them, yes? So let us just do that. So I would say that this is equal to, instead of x, square root of x, we write this as you said. And I will do the same thing here as well. And then I do the same thing here as well. And then I have a 5 at the end. But you see, I, you have to do a lot of work before even starting finding a primitive function. So what is the answer? Here, the bases are the same. I write x and I add the exponents. But we can do it in our head. 1 half plus 2 is 5 over 2. So this is x to the power of 5 over 2 minus 2. I multiply these two. Here, the exponent is 1. I add the exponents. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. And then I finally have x to power 1 over 2 and then plus 5. Okay, now everything is ready. Okay, can you do it in your head for me? What is the, a primitive function for the first one? Do you know the rule? The rule was 1 over a plus 1, x to power a plus 1. So you can do this in your head, yes? 1 over, can you do it in your head? Yes, 2 over 7. Because 1 over 5 over 2 plus 1 becomes 1 over 7 over 2, but this becomes 2 over 7. Yes, as simple as that. So it becomes 2 uh, over 7. Uh, where is that? 2 over 7, but x to power 7 over 2. Can you do the other one in your head? So remember, there is an extra minus 2 here. You have to consider that one. But this is 1 over 3 over 2 plus 1 which is what? 1 over 5 over 2, which is 2 over 5. But there is a minus 2 here. Multiplying them, it becomes minus 4 over 5. x to the power of 5 over 2. And the next one, add 1 to it in your head. It becomes 3 halves, but you have to write the reciprocal, so it is 2 thirds, but x to the power of 3 halves. But what about 5? 5x, yes. And then a constant at the end. 
So that is the answer. By the way, we were not able, I hope that you agree, we were not able to just guess this function whose derivative is that function. So even though we started with simple idea of guessing, there was no probable way to guess such a function whose derivative is that one. And is it possible to find another function whose derivative is that one? No. Yes? Because every function whose derivative is that can differ at most by a constant. So you might you sh you shouldn't be uh, waiting for another person coming giving you a simpler function whose derivative is that one. No, according to this, it does not exist. And I think it's a good idea. We can also learn in GeoGebra how to do that. It's uh, I don't know. Let us see that how we do it. For example, if I start with integral, I think yes. So you just put integral and go you the function and your variable. So let me just choose that. Let us see how GeoGebra reacts here. Uh, I don't know where this uh, uh, virtual keyboard has, where is that virtual keyboard? I don't know. So it's a little bit problem here. Okay, so how should I do that? So let me write integral here. It is remember the name is integral, not primitive function in GeoGebra for the reason that we will learn later. So we just put integral, for example, the function is a square root of x. And then we go outside and then I have x minus 1 to the power of 2. And then I have also a plus 5 at the end. And my variable, of course, here is x. Now let us see how it works. It can, okay, it calculated that. Uh, and I think the answer is quite good, yes. But you, you can compare that. He, he, GeoGebra has chosen C1 to be 0. Might be it's a good idea if we go to cast view and do the same thing. But I hope that you see that the first term that GeoGebra finds is exactly according to my thing. Yes, it is 2 over 7. But GeoGebra, instead of writing x to power 7 over 2, it has written a square root of x times x cubed. But x cubed times square root of x is exactly x to the power of 7 over 2. That's correct. And then minus 4 over 5, square root of x, x squared, and 2 thirds, square root of x, x, and then 5x. And then GeoGebra has chosen C1 to be constant 0 here. Of course, you can play around with that constant, and that's a good thing. But I think if we switch to a uh, cast view, it might be better for calculating these things, yes? So let me just go to cast view and then do the same thing here. Now, oh, by the way, in cast view, you have this integral sign, which is the sign of primitive function. So I don't know how it works, but let me just type my function again. So a square root of x. So let me write f of x is equal to square root of x. It's very important to learn this software because we will have it in national exam plus 5. But then I don't know if I press this integral sign, it does not give me the answer. I don't know why. Okay, so what about if I write it again? So let me write f. So why the answer is wrong then? <laughs> this GeoGebra is very acting very weird. <laughs> so it is integrating of f. So let me change the name of my function to g. Might be it is confused with something else. Let me call it h. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you need to discover it yourself. But let me write integral of, let me repeat my function again. Uh, square root of x, and then multiplied by x minus 1 squared, and Oops. multiplied by x minus 1 squared and then plus 5 yes yes in I don't know so you need to learn how, why this doesn't work but this is correct that's exactly what we got here okay uh, any questions so I will stop this here but we will continue tomorrow again 
so let me stop recording. We can talk about the exam for the next week.